In this video, you'll learn what the DOM API is, what you can do with it, see a ton of examples, and walk away feeling like a million bucks, because that's how much money you can make if you learn what I'm about to teach you. Results may vary. How do all these JavaScript frameworks change the HTML for us? How is it that when you start the React app, your HTML is this small, but then it turns into this mess? Whether it's uh, function components or class components in React or directives in Vue and Angular, or even jQuery for that matter, they all use the same thing under the hood, which is eventually the almighty DOM API. If you take the most useful JavaScript APIs, and then take the most underrated and understudied JavaScript APIs and overlap them into a Venn diagram. This is called a Venn diagram. What you get at the center of that intersection is, in my opinion, the DOM API. We've all used this incredibly powerful API, but probably not directly. I didn't get exposed to it until maybe sixth or seventh year into my JavaScript career. So today we're gonna mess around with the DOM using a native browser API. And obviously we're gonna do it with pure JavaScript, no libraries, no frameworks, just you and me and the browser. We're gonna make a to-do app with about 10 lines of code. This is episode 15 of this 20 part series I'm calling 20 things JavaScript developers should know, but probably don't, as the one and only DOM. Let's go. Hello, I've been gone a while. I know, I miss you too. I got a bunch of comments asking where I was and if I was okay, I'm okay. I was mostly gone because of this. Let's begin. If you've never directly worked with the DOM, you should, and today is your chance. The DOM API is part of a large list called the web APIs that lets you do pretty much anything you want natively in the browser without using a third-party library. And before we go any further for all of today, let me be clear, I'm not saying third-party libraries are bad. Just like you, I use them every day at my work. All sorts of businesses and developers around the world depend on them to do their day-to-day -day job. But the thing that most developers don't know and they're not taught really, is how much you can do just using native browser APIs. Here's a list of all the web APIs, including audio, battery, Bluetooth, Canvas, clipboard, console, cookies, DOM, there it is, there's DOM. Uh, there's Fetch API that I covered in the last episode and so many other things, you name it, it's there. A lot of these here are relatively new, but the DOM was one of the first to get standardized and then really quickly it's got, it got implemented into pretty much every browser. For us to understand the DOM API, first we need to understand what the DOM is. It's this, this whole shebang. You probably recognize it from your dev console when you right click on an element and say inspect element. This whole tree of HTML nodes is the DOM and it's short for document object model. Forget the name, it sucks. It's the pure data representation of what you see rendered in the browser. So now what's the DOM API? It's the API that allows you to access all of this stuff, all these elements directly through code, JavaScript. It lets you find your elements, access their contents, their attributes, add event listeners, create new elements and add them to the DOM or remove them from the DOM and a lot of other crazy that gives you total control over uh, the page, AKA the document. Actually, you can clone React's source code from GitHub, React DOM that is, and search for some of the functions I'm gonna show you today and see how frequently they're used. It's pretty wild. It's all eventually done through the DOM API because it's the most common and from what I understand, the only entry point into the document. I think even WebAssembly has to call JavaScript to access the DOM. Okay, so today we're gonna look at how to create, read, update, delete. CRUD, and we're gonna use obviously JavaScript, no libraries, just you, me, and the browser. Okay, open up your browser, open the DevTools, and we can get started. So the DOM has a bunch of what's called interfaces. We're gonna use the document interface as our entry points. Through that, we'll get to other interfaces like elements and events and so on and so forth. And remember, what we're talking about today is within the context of the browser. Last thing before we start writing code, anything I show you today is for your knowledge and demonstration purposes. It does not mean you should do this in production code. I'll be doing a lot of real-time stuff just in the console. It's just to show you what you can do with these commands. Okay, okay. And with that, to the browser. Shrink. All right, we're gonna start with an object called document. Uh, actually, it's lowercase document. Look at that, it gets highlighted. If I hover over it, it seems to be the entirety of my page. 
if I click this arrow thingy, it opens up. So Chrome tries to be really cool and uh, actually render the, the whole inspect element kind of view for us here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in an object like that, which is short for this document document. And when I press enter, uh, now I can see the object. Okay, so let's go, go through the object. It has a lot of properties and methods. So what are some of these properties is, first of all, I have base URI, I have URL, I have children, uh, child nodes, we'll get to all of this. Uh, I have, uh, let's see, let's look at some of the methods. On, on blur, on click, these are interesting. Okay, so on click, what is that? On double click, DBL click. There's a lot here, right? So clearly document is an object that I can access and use its properties and methods. Let's mess around with that on click we saw. That's the first thing I'm gonna show you. Uh, let's do an arrow function, function, and I'm gonna say console.log, hello dom. Okay. Uh, so what do we think is gonna happen? I'm gonna go over here. If document is truly everything, I'm gonna click and I have these hidden, there we go. So I'm gonna click anywhere I click, it's gonna give me this console log. Now, most of the time, I don't wanna change the entire document, right? That we don't want a, a global click everywhere. So uh, let me get rid of all this. Let's drill down a little bit into this document of ours. Uh, I'm gonna go back to what I had before, document. Okay, so two things I wanna show you here. Document.head, okay, that's, uh, that's cool. And then there's document.body, which is the one we're gonna mess around with. All right, so if I open body and hover over it, same thing happens, the entire body of the document gets highlighted. So let's do that. Uh, document.body, this way I can't do a shorthand, so I'm just gonna say B, then we can go into B and look inside, and it looks very similar, doesn't it? Uh, it just doesn't have its own body or head, but it has children, child nodes, it has the same um, offsets, this is some of the positioning stuff, the, but it has all the same um, methods, right? We have on blur, on click, uh, by the way, on load is might be one that some of you have used before. Uh, it's just another method. So there you go. All of it is here. Let me close this. Actually, let's see what's inside body.children. Okay. Uh, there's an iframe, NTP app. I'm not sure what that is. Script, link, link, script, link. Okay. So there's seven children here. Let me go back to the elements look. And uh, look at that. Inside body, we have iframe, NTP app, script, link, link, script, link. So it seems to be that this is a data representation of exactly the child nodes that are directly under body. All right, that's cool. There's also uh, inner HTML. It looks like there's some stuff here. There's no text here, but there's inner HTML is in this iframe. So this seems to be like the entire HTML that's inside the body. So I'm gonna close this body again. Okay, so what's the point of accessing all these elements? Well, if you can access them, that means you can probably change them. Uh, let's add stuff first. Uh, I'll say document.body.append. So append, there's two of them. There's append and append child. What's the difference? Let's try append first. Um, my new thingy. Well, that didn't show up, or did it? If I scroll down, <laughs> I need to zoom in a little bit. Nope, not on that, on this. Uh, my new thingy got added to the DOM. Uh, and if I go into my elements, I can see all the way down, there is my new thingy. So that's what uh, append, body.append did for us. Let's try append child, uh, append child, yet another thingy, thinny. Ooh, failed to execute. I'm gonna pretend I didn't know that was gonna happen. Append child on node, parameter one is not of type node. So it, what it's saying is that you can't send me a string and assume that's gonna be an HTML node. If you do append, this is going to be a text node, so string is fine but it's asking for a node. So we need to create an element. If we wanna add an element to 
uh, the body, it needs to actually be an element. So how do we create an element? We can say document dot create. Look at how many creates there are. Create element. Now this function, this method is telling me it needs a tag name or local name. So the tag name I'm going to use is H1. We all know what an H1 is. Actually, before I do that, I need to hold it inside a variable so I can play around with it. This H1 doesn't have to be the same as this H1. So just so you know, my heading. Cool. And then I can say document dot append child like we we're doing before. And then I'm going to add my heading. Ah, it doesn't work again because I added it to the document. I need to add it to the body. OK, uh, it returns the element itself. H1. I don't see it here. Well, I'm going to scroll down. Uh, there's a little bit of gap here. That's not good. But if I go into my um, HTML, you can see the H1 is there. But the good thing is I can say my heading dot inner text, let's say equals. I am your header. And it showed up here. Booyakasha. Look at this. We're I'm manipulating the DOM, adding things. This is cool. I'm going to change it. No, this is, that's what's uh, nice about this is that these are just JavaScript objects. Uh, I'm going to say Kukumba. And let's see if our oh, there we go. Thank you, Mac OS. Kukumba. Makes your bones stronger. Let's do something else. Instead of adding something useless like Kukumba, cucumbers are not useless. How about we try to add the current time? Yeah, current time of what's happening right now. Uh, I'm going to do something really not great uh, because I told you this is not uh, we shouldn't be doing this uh, in the beginning. Can I change the inner text? Uh, OK, so I just killed the entirety of the body. So please don't do this, but I'm doing it so we can get rid of uh, everything and I can show you a little easier. So I'm going to refresh actually and kill the HTML uh, one more time. OK, everything is gone. Everything is awesome. I'm going to copy pasta from my notes. So my heading, I'm going to create a heading. Then I'm going to add it to my HTML. I know it's there because we saw that. Um, just to be clear, I'm going to do this in the meantime. Dot inner. Well, I can even do this to prove that it's there. Chrome tries to be too smart. Inner text equals Kukumba. So that's there. OK, so now what I'm going to do is uh, const now equals new date. I don't know if you're familiar with the date function. If you're not, go to MDN and check it out. It's pretty cool. And then I can say my heading dot inner text equals. Let's do a little string literal and I can do now dot. So now is an object that represents the current date uh, and the current moment. I can say uh, now dot get hours. So what is that 10? It's 10 in the morning. Uh, and I can put one of these in there and do another. I don't need uh, I need this. And do now dot get minutes, minuti, minutes. What time is it? 1048. So that's useful, right? That's probably how uh, you can go about updating the time on the on the page. If you've been to a website where it says what time it is, it's actually grabbing the time from my machine from my locally set time, which for me is just set to what the Internet says it is because I trust the Internet. This should prove that we can actually grab dynamic information and and drop them on the DOM. It doesn't have to be static content. So we just turned this into a mini app that shows you what the time is. So if you run this exact same code on your machine at a different time or even on my machine at a different time, it's going to result on something different on the DOM, which is very, very cool. Uh, quick note here that this time isn't going to update because this code only runs once. It runs uh, only the one time that I execute it. You can set an interval or a timer or you know, set, set interval is probably the way to do it, where this can repeat once a, a minute or, or whatever. 
but just know that this time isn't gonna update automatically. All right, I'm gonna get rid of all this. And what we're gonna do is uh, now build a useless to-do app. To-do apps are pretty useless, but that's what, that's what we're gonna do because uh, it's gonna show us a lot of interesting things that we can do with removing and event listeners and a few other things. So I'm gonna do the terrible thing again and get rid of everything in the DOM. Uh, so now I'm gonna create const input. So what is a to-do app? Let me zoom out for a second. A to-do app has an input where you can type the thing that you have to do. Then it probably has a button where you can submit that to-do to be added to your to-do list. Then there's of course the list itself, the, the, all the things that you have to do. Uh, and uh, you should probably be able to remove things from the to-do list, right? There's usually a button where you can click it and it it removes the, the thing and it says it's done now. So we're gonna try and create this with, I'm gonna hope for about 10 lines of code. I haven't counted how many, but I'll show you how easy it is to some, build something like this in the DOM using just JavaScript. Okay, back to the browser. You whoops, rum num 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 browser. <laughs> I've missed you guys. So let's create an input, document, uh, just like before, uh, just like the heading, I'm gonna create document that create uh, element, create element there. What kind of element do we want? We want an input. Don't just put input here, it takes a string, but it has to match the type of the, the tag name that you want. All right, I have an input. Should we add it to the DOM? Well, let's play with it first. Input has a thing called placeholder. It's the little text that shows up there uh, inside the, the input. I'm gonna say add um, uh, to do, fine. I'm not feeling uh, particularly creative today. Do you feel it? I feel it. Document.body.append apned child input in pat. Look at that. All right, it doesn't look great. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Doesn't look great, but it's there. Cool, next thing, let's add our submit button equals same thing, document that create element. And as you start doing this stuff, you, you start to notice why some of these frameworks have come into play because the DOM API is a little bit redundant. That's, it kind of sucks to always have to create elements like this, but now you know. All right, let's do the button, the button dot, uh, how do we do the label? I think it's just value equals add. Let's just call it add. All right, let's hope for the best. Uh, and then up, we're gonna append it, button. Oh, it wasn't value. It's, what is it? I have notes here. I can, well, inner text, that's the note I wrote, which is not great, but whatever. Inner text, add. Cool, all right, so we have a button. It doesn't do anything, right? And the input doesn't do anything. So let's add a event listener to the button, button dot add event listener. Uh, we can say, so look at this, the type of the event and then the listener, the handler itself, and then we have some options, which is optional. So the type is on click on, Click, and the listener has to be a function. It can be a reference to a function or we can just write it here in line. So I'm gonna say uh, to start with console.log, you clicked me, dude. Is that everything? Okay, let's see. Uh, add, no, it doesn't do it because it's not on click, it's click. What are you doing? All right, let's see. Okay, you click me, dude. I have a typo here. I'm terrible at that. I'll get rid of all this so we can go back to the top. So this way you can see a little easier. Instead, I wanna add a click where, what does it do? It grabbed the value from inside the to-do, learn to code. And it does something to it. Maybe it creates a div and adds it to the body. Yeah, let's do that. What is input dot value so const equal actually let's create our document uh, our div first equals document dot create element um, div and we've been naming these the same as the type of 
uh, tag, but they don't have to be, as I mentioned. Div dot inner text equals. I'm gonna get some shit for using inner text. Just cool it, guys. Uh, just use whatever is better. Actually, inner text is not is not so bad. Um, it is supported in pretty much every browser now. So uh, if you want to be particular about using a method, like there is a set text or set HTML or something like that. There are other ways to do it, but uh, the point here is that we're doing this dynamically. Input the value. We do that and then document.body.appendChild. It's starting to get uh, repetitive a little bit, isn't it? So you're starting to appreciate React a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me see, did I change anything? Okay, and then what I had uh, was I'm gonna grab, so I'm gonna create a div element. I'm gonna add the value of the input at that point when the thing is clicked into the div. And then I'm gonna add the div to the document. And then I wanna get rid of, I wanna get everything out of the input. So I wanna clear the input basically. Okay, should we do this? Let me see, Let me check my notes. Everything looks good. All right, let's see. So learn to code. <gasps> it worked. All right, let's take a look at the elements. Body, we have an input, we have the, bu uh, the button that has a text inside, add, and it said learn to code. Let me add some more. Uh, go do stuff. <laughs> it gets added. So every time we click this thing, uh, this entire function runs, which is, is very, very cool. So you're, you're manipulating the DOM here, dude. Or do that. We're adding things and we're removing things. We're not removing things yet. We're, we we have event listeners, but we can remove it though. We can we can say when I click on each of these, you can delete it. Before I do anything else, I want to make sure we do this uh, using semantic HTML. This is terrible. Uh, what I have here is what amateurs do. They just drop things on the DOM. They don't care about semantics of HTML. Divs div soup. We don't want a div soup here where you have like lots of different divs and different layers. If you have a form like I do, an input and a button, it should be inside a form so that some browser default things like um, pressing enter and, and stuff like that by default works. So we're gonna take this and convert it into semantic HTML. So I'm gonna copy pasta some of this so you don't have to watch me type it again. Let's get rid of everything in the document, in the body. I'm going to create a form element, so it's up type form. I'm going to append the form to the body. Then I'm going to do the same things. I'm going to create the input and add to do, but then I'm going to say form.appendChild instead of body document.body append child. So I'm going to add the input to the form. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the button. I'm going to add the, let's say add submit. What is the seriousness of submit? So then form that event shot body. So I have a form that got added to the body and then I have an input and then a button that get added to the form. And then instead of just adding the divs to nowhere or to the root of the body, I'm gonna create an unordered list, a UL, and the UL I'm gonna add to the body. And then on form submit, this I probably should write. Form has a on submit. Uh, and the reason why it doesn't autocomplete is because it doesn't exist yet. So I'm gonna press enter. So everything gets added. Uh, this is fantastic. So <clears throat> if you wanna see it, sure, I'll show it to you, Craig. <laughs> we have a form. So now you can see, you can add things to, not just to the body, but to any other elements. If you have a reference to it, like I do, like with the form, I can add things to the, to the form. So now I can say form dot, press dot, and all of the attributes and all of the functions that I can do show up here on scroll, no, on submit. Oh, beautiful. Uh, I can then add a, an arrow function here and say, I'll do that at the end. I'm gonna create a list element. Uh, this does not have to be typed again because I have already done it for you. Uh, list element, so li, which is a list element, semantic HTML life here. And then I'm gonna add those li's to the ul, right? So we have the form and it has a sibling that is the unordered list. 
the form has input and a button and the unordered list is going to have list items, the LIs. The one thing I have to add here is E, which is coming through here, or I should say event, uh, is a parameter that gets passed into every event. Ah, no, I messed it up. There we go. Uh, I'm going to say event dot prevent default. The reason why I have to do this, the reason why I have to do this is because forms by default, when you submit them, they uh, actually are supposed to redirect you somewhere else. So if I don't do prevent default, this page is going to refresh since I don't have a, a URL where it's supposed to go to. So this is a larger discussion we have to leave for later. It's about how events work and propagation and why preventing default is necessary a lot of the time when you're writing JavaScript. So just take my word for it. I'm going to come back to it in a different episode and explain it, uh, why exactly. So let's add this. I think that's everything. And by the way, I can get rid of this since there's only one argument going into my function. Let's press enter and see what happens. Okay. Let's inspect an element. Not, not much actually has changed. We have the UL. Let's add our stuff. Learn. Zidab. Okay. I'm going to first press the button shows up. Great. Then I'm going to go learn other things. This time I'm going to press enter on my keyboard. Why did that work? Because we're inside a form that has a on submit event handler. This is why you want semantic HTML. This is why you want to use the right element for the right thing, because you get this type of behavior without, I didn't write a on key down, which is the event for capturing keyboard events. I don't have that, but so this means I can just type and type and type and keep going. And I don't have to every time go to the button. So let's try and now uh, add this functionality where we remove the allies. Actually, let me take a look at the elements. Uh, ally. Yeah. So all the allies are here and they all got added dynamically. Okay. So now if we want to remove the elements, so I can say ally dot on click, I'm not going to add a button next to it uh, for the purposes of this video. I can just say every time you click anywhere on the ally, I can say li dot remove, which is a function that every HTML node has where it can just remove itself. So if I do that, oh, li is not defined. There is no reference to the li. So uh, what we're going to have to do, uh, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to do this again. I'm going to have to refresh the page, copy pasta the entire thing. And obviously this is not how you develop. You develop in your IDE. I'm in the Chrome dev tools. Uh, just to demonstrate stuff where we have reference to an li is here. It's inside this form on submit function. So what I can do is I can actually put it right inside here where I have access to the li while I'm customizing the li, adding inner text and stuff like that. Uh, add, I can add event handler, the click on click uh, removal functionality to the li. So that way, every time an li is created, a, an on click is uh, added to it. A slightly better approach here would be if I just had a reference to this uh, as a function. Let's see if this works. Const remove elemente. I can say equals function that takes an element l l dot remove. Why is this better? This is better because uh, remove element. Uh, this is better because we're not creating this function every time for every element. We're just referring to it. It's okay if you have like a few elements on the page. The memory footprint is really what we're worried about here. If you had a giant function and you were creating it thousands of times, you don't want to do that. This way, it's still better practice to do it this way. So there's a lot here that I don't know, maybe I missed something. Let's see what happens. Uh, we create it uh, number one gets added. Oh, we're not clearing the value. Maybe I have some kind of, oh yeah, I do have an error here. Show my errors. Can on property reading? Oh, you know what happened? I am not passing the element. I'm not passing the, uh, the reference to the element to the function. So let's do this. Ugh, we have to do this one more time. Okay. We can do this one more time. A real demo. What we could use is probably function that uh, bind. 
bind, I covered a, a few episodes ago during the, I think the prototype episode. Um, uh, what bind takes is uh, the disk keyword, a reference to this, so you can bind it to that. And then it takes parameters as to what you wanna pass there. So I think I can pass li in there as a second parameter and it will be this element. Um, what we can do, you know, we can just do console.log li and see what, see what li is first. Uh, let's do that. Okay. Hello one. It gets there, and then when I click it, li is not defined at Drumo. It's called L. Man, I'm making so many mistakes today. L. Uh, let's do that, and then hello one. When I click it, okay, that's my li. And if I do hello two, um, click it, that's my hello two. All right, perfect. So let's redo this for the last time. Instead of doing console dog, I want to say l dot remove. So remove yourself, or remove the element I'm passing to. This is actually very nice. This is kind of a, a functional way of writing it. It's the next episode. And so submit, fantastico. And I can say learn to code, learn ZDOM. Then I'm going to get coffee with Ryan Crow. I'm actually a little late. Get coffee with Ryan. And then afterwards, what am I doing this afternoon? I'm probably gonna be editing this video. Edit video for YouTubes. Okay, so if I wanna remove them now, click the second one, and it goes away. Look at that, we're getting rid of the elements dynamically. And so just let's do a ton here, and we can just remove whichever we don't want, or as soon as you're done doing your thing, you can just remove them. All right, so that took a few tries, but but we got there. Let me run this one more time so we have this. Now I wanna show you a little bit about some of the attributes that you can, you can update. Uh, now we're gonna take this and make it a little bit nicer. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna add, let's see, what types of attributes do we have access to? So document, let's pretend we didn't have any CSS here. So if we, if we don't have any CSS and we want to add, let's say, inline styles, which is not great, but it's a way of adding attributes. So, and it's it's really visible. It demos well. So I want to do that. Document.body. What did it have uh, as any sort of styling property? So if I go into this again, I go all the way down to uh, wow. There's so much it has to paginate it. Style. Style is a property that every HTML node has. Um, so it has background color. Uh, well, that's not it. This animation stuff. There is, there we go. Background color, uh, background image. Any CSS property you can imagine here is, uh, you have access to it, except you can't do kebab case or, or uh, snake case. It has to be camel case the way you see here. So something like a background color, it would have to be camel case. What do I mean by that? Let's, uh, let's try a few things here. So we can say document.body uh, style dot, what do I wanna do? A padding, let's add some padding here, equals 16 pixels. Nice, did you pay attention to this? Uh, great, then I wanna do, uh, can I add stuff to other elements? Input dot style, uh, sure. And the reason why we have access to input is because I just um, cr created the element. I just got rid of my console, but I do have a reference to input. Uh, we probably don't want to do this after you created it. You want to do it kind of as the same process. But I can say input dot style dot. Um, I don't like the fact that it's touching the add button. I can say margin right, and this is what I was talking about, where I said things need to be camel case as opposed to CSS, you can't do that because that's not allowed in JavaScript. Um, let's give it eight pixels. Let's stick with um, a similar, there we go, similar kind of styling. You can do anything you want. You can change all the, the colors if you want it. Um, we can make this super ugly, but <laughs> just for the sake of showing it to you, background color equals red. Ah! <laughs> Back to white, back, back to a, a non-so abrasive red. 
so that's pretty cool. The other thing you can do is document that body that attributes all together. It shows you all the things that it has on it. So we added a style uh, attribute there, which is this, right? So it, it, uh, I have access to those. I can say, all right, tell me what other things are in there. I can read my um, attributes like my IDs or classes or anything else that's on there. I have access to, I can read those. So let's create another attribute. So style, um, it, it does the job for us where it creates the attribute and adds it. What if I wanna add a ID to this or a class? We probably don't wanna do an ID, so let's do a class. Um, document that body, what do you think it is? Set attribute. And what does it take? A name and a value. The name is, I wanna do a class. And the value is blue. It's not gonna turn it blue because it's just a class. But let's say you had a CSS style sheet where you had a dot class and you had the background be blue. Uh, you can apply the class to the element and then it would just, uh, the styles would apply. So now the class blue is also on my body. So if I do attributes instead of one, I see two, I see style and I see class. Cool, so let's go back to the read operation. We're almost through here. The way we read so far is document.body, and that's not that's not great, right? We don't wanna go through the, the body every time. We wanna say document. There are different ways to, uh, to query the DOM, so to speak. Uh, get coffee, so I wanna have multiple things here. So how do we get all the, how do we query the DOM using the DOM API? We can say documents, there's a few things here. If I write get, there's a bunch here. Uh, get element by class name, okay? And then obviously we have to pass it a class name. Let's say blue. Remember, you don't have to put the dot here because you're already saying you're specifying that you wanna get it by class. So it's not uh, a CSS uh, selector, it's just a class name. If I do that, it says, well, it gives me an HTML collection, which is effectively an array. And it says you have one element in that array, the length is one, and that is the body. And that's the element where I dynamically, manually, using code, I added uh, this class to. Uh, in fact, if I go to the form and do this, add attribute class blue. Obviously this, this is uh, just for testing purposes, just to see this work. Uh, now my collection has two. It has the body and the UL. So when you run your query, it at that particular moment goes through the DOM, finds all the things that you need that you queried for, and it gives them to you. So what else can we do? Get element. Uh, this is get multiple, get elements by class because you're allowed to have multiple things of the same class. But you can also say get elements by ID. I don't have anything with any IDs in there, so this is probably uh, useless for me right now. Get element by tag name. We have two LIs. Let's see if it gives me the two of them. Yeah, perfect. So this way I can uh, I don't know, what's a good use case for this? You can have a button on the bottom of the screen or at the top or whatever to say, remove the latest or remove the oldest, right? You can get the list of LIs uh, and grab the first one from the list or the last one, whichever you wanna do. So it's it's it gives you a lot of control as you can see. But the most powerful of all is document dot it's not actually get, it's query. Query selector and selector all. So query selector, what it does is, it actually takes a CSS selector. Uh, so I can say dot blue. So now I have to put the dot there. Uh, and it gives me the body, but wait a minute, didn't we have, we have two? Yes, we did have two. And that's where query selector all comes into play. You can say body and the UL both of these guys uh, return. So those are, um, and let's do the li as well. So it doesn't have to be a class, it can be element type. So now it's a node list of two li one and two. So it's an extremely powerful way of basically scraping what's on the DOM. A lot of the sites that do web scraping, if you've heard the term, they have to use some of this to query the DOM. 
Okay, so here is everything that we looked at today. Uh, we can read elements. We can read their attributes. Within their attributes, we can get their styles, their IDs and classes. We also saw that we can create new attributes and add it to any element. We can create new elements altogether using a type of element, a tag name, and we can add them to the DOM to any particular parent element that we want. Then we saw that we can also add event handlers, including click and a whole host of other events that I didn't go through today, but that's what MDN and documentation is for. And we also saw that we can remove elements from the DOM as long as we have a reference to that element. And that, my friends, barely covers, I don't know, 10% of what the DOM API can can do. I mean, it's what's capable of. There's so much more you can do. My goal is not to show you everything that this API can do. My goal is to show you how powerful this is and that you can probably do whatever you think you need to do with the, the DOM itself, with, with the API itself. And the best place uh, to look for documentation is our good friend MDN. Hopefully that gave you an idea of how crazy powerful this stuff is and what React and Angular and all your favorite tools are doing under the hood or jQuery for old like me. <laughs> it's not magic. It's just they're just using the pure browser API. But obviously the benefit of those things is that you have to write a lot less code. I wrote a lot of code here today. So I'm going to put all this code up on GitHub in case you want to look at it. But again, the best place to look is MDN. And uh, and that's that's it. Now, what should be the next episode? I'm so glad you asked. I actually already told you. So this has been episode 15 of 20 things JavaScript developers should know, but probably don't. I'm glad to be back. The next episode will be Pure Functions, episode 16. Uh, be sure to tune in. It's an important concept in modern JavaScript. This is a fundamental piece to functional programming. I will see you then and uh, come find me on Instagram for personal posts and you know one minute shorts of all the same videos I'm doing here. All right, good to see you. I promise it won't be another six months before the next video. It'll probably drop in a couple of weeks. All right. See you next time.